skadoosh. Welcome to the 5,000 stream, fellas. We're going to go informal. We're going to... We're going to skip the Traveler today. Oh, glare. But it, well, I mean, we, we can touch on Traveler. At the end of this episode, we'll do an open Q&A and whatever you guys want to ask me about, we will go through. But before we do that, there's a couple of things we should talk about. Uh, first of all, uh, expression of gratitude. I appreciate each and every one of you, those of you that are in the chat, those of you that stopped by for the pre-recorded videos for Miniature War Games, and those of you who have been patient with me as I've... I don't want to say rebranded, but as I have expanded the scope from merely miniature wargaming into tabletop RPGs, although, as we all know, RPGs done properly are miniature wargames. Uh, I want to open today's episode by talking about something that's kind of important. It's the sort of thing I don't usually talk about, and that's the current thing. And for the sake of the future viewers of this video, uh, I, I'm using the phrase the current thing because there's always a new current thing. I wonder if I can fix the lighting on this. That's a that's pretty glare. Let's see if let's let's see if this helps if I just go with the side there. Yeah, I like that lighting a lot better. All right. So right now as I record this, today is March 25th, 2024, and the current thing is combat wheelchairs. And you'll notice I haven't really talked about it except to mock the concept a little bit. And the reason I haven't talked about it is that it it doesn't do any good. And in fact, when you talk about the current thing, you are, you've already lost the fight. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is that when you allow the enemies of the good and the beautiful and the true to dictate what the terms of the discussion are, then you've already lost. So uh, let me back up a step. There have been a lot of current things over the years. We've seen uh, flags that show the spectrum of color as the current thing. We've seen uh, a ahistor historical settings with a historical demographics as a current thing. And the latest is ensuring that that illogical uh, inclusion of people with disabilities engaging in activities that make no sense. So and I'm not going to talk about any of those individually, but I wanted to talk about the current thing in general because it's kind of whack-a-mole that we keep playing. And I keep seeing people step on the same rake when it comes to dealing with the current thing. And what you have to understand is that the, the current thing isn't the point of the exercise. The people that are advocating for the current thing don't really care about the current thing. They simply view the current thing as a means to apply leverage to you and your table. Understand that the current thing is not, when they talk about it, they're not talking about something that they want to include in their game. They can do that. There's nothing stopping them. What they mean is they want to ensure that the current thing is included in your thing, in your game, at your table. And they don't want to do that because they're trying to improve the game. They want to do that because they want to exercise control over you. It's a pretty complicated subject, but it basically boils down to the fact that there are a host of people who are playing an entirely different game than you are. It doesn't matter what game you're playing when you sit down at the table. You might be playing Dungeons & Dragons. Warhammer 40k. You might be playing Traveler. You might be playing any one of a host of games, even video games. We see that now. And the point is not to do what they enjoy. The point is to make sure that you're doing what you don't enjoy. And so as bullies do, they find ways to get you onto the slippery slope of adhering to and recognizing and acknowledging their power. And if you do that even a little bit, then you've already surrendered to their point of view. And so when it comes to something like the present current thing, combat wheelchairs, it doesn't make any sense to talk to them about how this current thing makes no sense within the context of the game. When you present a list of 100 reasons why the current thing makes no sense, all you're doing is presenting a hundred reasons that it makes sense to use it as a power play. Go back to the schoolyard, and if you're in the bathroom and you're explaining to the bully that you understand he wants your head to go in the toilet so he can flush it, you're not presenting with an argument for not doing that. You are explaining to the bully why it's all that much more important that your head goes into the toilet. The fact that it's illogical and makes no sense is the point of the exercise. If it made sense to do it absent 
the strong arm tactics, then you would already be doing it. So it, it doesn't matter whether it makes sense. The point is not the combat wheelchairs or the spectrum flag or the ahistorical demographics. The point is, I'm trying to get you to acknowledge that I'm the boss here. And this is a very different game than the game we play at the table. And it can be a little bit confusing because a, a lot of the people that are playing that game, that social game that exists below the tabletop game, they don't even care about the tabletop game. Many of them don't even participate in the tabletop game. Anybody that spent any any little bit of time at rpg.net knows that that crowd doesn't actually play role-playing games. There are a few people that do. And of course there are people that play both games, but there's so many people that are playing that social game that they will do the bare minimum of, of work to establish themselves. And Warhammer 40k is plagued by this right now. People will go out and buy a painted army so they can put it on their table and say, look, I've got my painted army. You have to show me your painted army before you can tell me that I'm not allowed to demand the current thing for them is female space marines always. And I got to give the Warhammer 40k crowd credit because they're very good at, in addition to, and again, it's a mistake to like discuss the merits of female space space marines based on its own there there's uh, we'll get to the, the counter in a minute but i want you to understand that, that like this social game is occurring at the tabletop level because these are bullies they're predators and one of the things that predators do is they go to where the prey is and our hobby is a wonderful hobby it's open it's welcoming it's anybody that's willing to do the work is welcome to join and have some fun and predators will disguise themselves and they'll lurk in the bushes and they'll try to paint themselves as, hey, I'm just, they'll don the sheep's clothing so that they can ambush you. So what do you, so, you know, that's one of the things to be aware of is that, you know, you can play the tabletop game and not play the social game, but, you know, that's part, that's, these are two totally separate games. And it's always a good idea to establish that the person who is placing demands on you has no power and the way you do that is by not responding to their demands when they say here's the hoop you have to jump through the hoop you have to explain to me why my position is wrong they've set themselves up as the arbiter and now you're trying to meet their standard and simply by by taking them as at as a good faith argument you have already established that they are the arbiter of what should or should not be in the game that's a mistake don't give them any power. The only power they have is the power you give them. And one of the ways you give them power is by agreeing that they are the determiner. They're the decider. They get to choose. And the response should always be no. You all these are these are in in most cases they are they are freaks and mutants who have no friends. They're not likable people. People that are warm and generous and giving don't engage in these kind of games. They don't have to engage in these kind of games to get that dopamine hit. People who have friends get dopamine hits by helping their friends, by seeing their friends succeed, by building others up. And that's what we try to focus on here at the channel. You'll notice that I don't engage in the kind of behavior that pundits in the RPG world, you might call them RPG pundits do. And that's a classic case study of a guy who always accedes to the power of those who want to decide whether he belongs in the hobby or not. He says, oh, you want me to put a man in a dress on the cover of my of my book? Well, I'll show you I already did it. Oh, you want me to do X? Well, I'll do X two times. And for some reason, the RPG pundits think that by agreeing that the arbiters get to decide whether they're allowed in the hobby or not, that they've somehow won. And then by pointing out, well, they must be hypocritical because I've done everything they've said and they continue to bully me. Well, that's how bullying works, guys. If if you give up your lunch money to the bully, if, if you, well, hey, I brought extra money. Here's an extra $20. It's not about the lunch money. All you've done is set yourself up for them to create more hoops to jump through. So never jump through their hoops. Never talk about what they want to talk about. Always turn the, the conversation back to them. And this is where the Warhammer 40K guys are really good at it. They say, oh, you want female space marines? Show me your army. Show me receipts. Show me your game. Show me a battle report. Show me what you've done that I should have any interest in your opinion on this subject at all. And 
a typical response is, oh, well, now you're or you just post a picture of their avatar, because if they have the real life picture, then the odds are 10 to one that they are a freak show. And all you have to do is show their picture. And that's mockery enough. Everyone knows that you're making fun of them by holding up the mirror to them. And they'll say things like, well, that's a logical fallacy. Are you you're engaging in personal attacks? Well, maybe. But notice how we've already switched. We've flipped the script. We're no longer talking about the current thing. We're talking about you. And as long as you are defending yourself from my attacks, my counterattacks, remember, because merely by making their demands, they've already attacked you. So by making the conversation about them, you have pulled a social jujitsu. Now you have to respond to my accusations. And now we're not talking about the current thing. We're talking about you. And by defending yourself, you have now ceded ground to me. You're now trying to prove yourself to me and by extension, the rest of the room. So when it comes to these current things, always flip it around. Always start putting demands on them. And if we could talk about the Bro SR a little bit, this is one of the reasons that the Bro SR has been so wildly effective because we have receipts. We've got a dozen blogs and this channel, let's be honest, is one of those where we post receipts on a regular basis. What we advocate for, we do in practice and we're bringing it to the community as a means of improving not just the community as a whole, but your game as an individual. If you implement one-to-one -one time, if you experiment with solo role-playing games, if you play the games as they are written, then, then you know, you've got the ground to stand on. Um, bear in mind, the other thing that, that I wanted to talk about is that if, if you do this, if you stand up, up to the bullies and the predators and you say, no, you have no power here, you have no say over whether or not I'm engaged in the hobby or not, because I've got the rules. And that's one of the big benefits of playing the rules as written. No one can ever take Proto Traveler away from me. Footnote, do you know who coined the term Proto Traveler? I just learned this about an hour ago. The guy that dropped that the first time on the internet was Jeffro Johnson, the guy that that spawned, that basically prompted the revival of one-to-one -one time, the guy that prompted a massive revival in interest in Appendix N, the guy who has changed the hobby twice now, also coined the term proto-traveler. I thought it was just one of those phrases that just like everybody used, and it is, but that's because Jeffro Johnson coined it. I'm astonished. It, that just keeps happening. I it's it's a little bit. It's a little bit disconcerting how often that happens. We now bring you back to our regularly scheduled educational video on how to deal with these people. Um, flip the script. The conversation is not about the current thing. It's about you. It's about why you're doing this. It's about what gives you the authority. And if you stand up to these people, and we've now talked about how, then they have to resort to the other aspect of the social game, which is since I can't control your game, I'm going to try to get you out of the way. And we see this on the schoolyard all the time. The bully will pick a target. And if the target successfully defends himself, then it becomes a case of I have to isolate that person. I have to get them out of the way. And I have to argue that they're not part of the hobby. So what the bully will do is he will go to one of the weaklings and he will go to somebody against whom he can exercise some leverage. And one of the weakest batches of people out there are people whose financial security rests upon providing the product, the brand. So they will go to the brand and say, I can isolate you and cost you money, which will cost you your job with your higher ups. And so they will work to get the current thing in as an official part of the branded experience. That way they can come back to you and say, if you're not doing things the way I've told you to do them, then you're not part of the club. You're out of the, you're out of the hobby. You're off the island. I've isolated you. You are alone and you're not part of the island. Well, they can't take these away from us. And this is part of why they demand, they hate the fact that this information wants to be free and it's out there. They hate the fact that we continue to have voices and they will continue to try to isolate us. So the other big thing I wanted to mention is when you see someone who is being set upon by these pack of wolves, don't be afraid to, to give them a like when they're standing up. Say something. 
it's up to all of us to push back against these entryists. I, I hate to use the term tourist because it's a little bit played out at this point. And, and to be fair, a lot of the people that engage in these kind of bullying tactics have been around for 30, 40 years. And they do enjoy the, the actual game itself, but they use that experience as, as a bludgeon against those who, are, who put the hobby first because they're playing that second game. Um, so, you know, just and, and be aware that when somebody says, oh, well, you're, you're making a personal attack, that's a logical fallacy. You abandon logic when you decided to try to vote me off the island. When a bully engages in the social bullying behavior, they've already abandoned the logic. So you are under no obligation to respond as a in good faith because they have already done so. Um, I'm already kind of bored of talking about this. We may circle back around to it when we come to the Q&A. Um, but I, I just wanted to mention, right, the, don't worry so much about the current thing. And as we as we slide into the next topic, oh, you know what I have here? Oh, where's my thing? We have, oh, there we go. The current, I have a banner now. Look at that. Look at that. We're, we're getting real. Did you notice I got the StreamYards up, right? The channel's getting better all the time. I went ahead and, uh, and downloaded that. I, so what I'm going to do now is let's... I have another topic that I want to talk about here at the 5,000, but before I do, let's just take a quick swing through the comment section and we'll see what happens if, if I post this up. Uh, we got a lot of, a lot of the usual suspects in there. Peter Hansen's around, Michael Collins, Pounds Cleveland. Thanks for the congratulations, guys. Charles Latora. Charles has an interesting, um, there he is, Charles Latora. Uh, he has an interesting ch war game channel. I really enjoy it. He doesn't get a lot of views, but he, uh, he posts these little like two to three minute videos of just what he's working on right now. It's kind of a, a fun little video blog. I'll warn you, he he doesn't have the like classic radio announcer voice. I like that. It's charming. He speaks like a grandpa showing his his grandkids. Hey, look at this little thing that I'm doing now. Look at my collection, my little selection of books. And it's just like it's great. It's, it's a wonderful little addition to the feed because it's not 45 minutes. It's just a quick three minutes in and out. Go take a look at Charles Latour's page. He's a good guy. I really like him. We got Vince McMaximus. A lot of people saying congratulations. Uh, Jeffro Johnson says, I'm glad I didn't know. I didn't know. I don't know what the current thing is. And there's no point in trying to keep up with the current thing because there's always another current thing. The, the, the thing with predators is that they're hungry and they will always keep looking for the wedge issues and they'll keep trying to push. Just Get you onto that slope so they can push you down a little bit further. Get the nose into the tent. And then the next thing you know, there's a whole camel. Uh, Dornall, congratulations. Dornall, he's one of the guys on Geek Gab. They've been around since the original GG. You know what I'm talking about. That's another current thing. There's always multiple current things. Uh, Peter Hansen's in the house. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, the weirdos in their super duper combat commando wheelchair brigade. It's it's just it's just another face, right? And it's You know when the ride ends? Never. We're 10 years later and we're still dealing with the same stuff in, in AAA video games? Redonkulous. Chegg's Chambers. I, I owe Chegg's a, a starship named after him. Thanks for producing such great content. Comes as no surprise to me you've reached 5,000. And long may your success continue. By the way, my goal is to reach 5,000 in five years. My four-year anniversary is, is still a month away. We beat it by 13 months. Congratulations to all of us. Uh, hi from London. Oh my gosh, we've got we've got we got the Brit Bongs in the house. I love you guys. I love the way you're enthusiastic. You just enjoy your gaming your way. Keep staying strong in your beliefs, Luke. I really appreciate that, man. He uh, he uh, uh, Luke is a regular commenter. Jeff, we need to be the better bully. Yeah, that's what it all comes down to. And I, and again, it's. Defending yourself is not bullying. When a bully steps up and puts demands on you and you say, stop, back off, you're not being a bully. And when you get punched in the face, there's no sin in punching back. And that's one of the things I think people fail to realize with the book, with the, with the bro SR. And that's one of the reasons that, that this gets even more complicated is that th there's that classic bullying tactic of they get a little closer and a little closer, and a little closer, and they throw up a couple of false flags so that when you do finally defend yourself, they can point to the room and say, look how mean this guy is being to me. And I'm not being mean to you. I was perfectly content just talking about this stuff with my friends. Then you jumped ugly, 
and then I put your ass on the on the canvas and you said, wow, look how hard that guy hit me. Well, you know, don't start none, won't be none. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Caught a live stream. Hey, tag 1080. Yeah, I wanted to go a little bit early. I know it's um, 9 o'clock on the East Coast, and hopefully we can pick up the, the early risers over in the over in the Aussie world in the Kiwis. Nice shirt, Charles. I'm rocking the flamingo today. How about that? Yeah, I wear pink. I'm a man enough to do that. I wear pink tennis shoes because they cost $40. Uh, third most influential voice in RPGs. Uh, yeah, yeah, boy, there's, I, there's good stuff coming out of this corner of the hobby. James Streisand in the house. Oh, thanks for the congratulations, man. Uh, I did not expect to hear Mr. Wargame spitting some serious fire today. Don't get used to it. Cause I, I, this stuff is, I'm not really that interested in the game. When people want to throw down and they start the game, then I'm perfectly happy to play along, but particularly here on the channel, we are way too busy having fun pushing the boundaries and exploring the roots of the hobby to spend a whole lot of time. Uh, it, you know, fanning those flames. The, the channel could be way bigger if I made weekly updates and outrage clickbaity stuff, but plenty of other people do that. And we we've, we've got better things to do. We're, we're building here and we're, we're taking, in a, in a strange way, we are taking the offensive by establishing this little corner of the hobby where we are free to, you know, speak our mind. We still have to engage in a little bit of Sama's dot, right? We still have to recognize that that the YouTube algorithm is king and we are in the living room of YouTube and we have to make sure that we're picking our spots. We have to be wise as serpents. I read that in a book somewhere and we have to be careful about how we discuss these things. So we engage in um elite speak and we we use coded language dog whistle language if you prefer i don't care that's fine i'm going to talk about it one way or the other at least until i'm kicked off of this particular platform uh i genuinely don't understand how you can open the five ebooks and think they're even remotely related to the original the hobby has moved far i i'm i'm agnostic on that the fifth edition rule books are written in a way that they're, they're at least the couple of books that I've read are so free of genuine content. They, they have gone so far out of their way to be inoffensive and have nothing to say that you can conceivably use them to play the style of of Dungeons and Dragons that was popular in the 70s. You can do it. It's a heavy lift and you have to work hard to do so, but it's possible. I and, and I've seen it happen. I've I've read the blogs and I've talked to guys who are using fifth edition, and all it takes is returning to the wargaming roots and honoring that PvP, you know, uh perspective. And building the multiple layers of both patron play and tabletop play and stepping back and treating the campaign as a whole, as a collective toy, rather than as a narrative. Uh, but you're right. You have to ignore so much of the, the general conventional advice. Uh, Jeffro, getting voted off the island is tough when you actually live on an island. Well, yeah, you know, and, and it's it's... We, we, we've called them locusts before because they find a fertile crop they and they 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 you know they eat all of the seed corn and then they move on and they leave us behind to rebuild but this is the cycle of life this is part of living in a fallen world where you have you know the growth and then the infiltration and then the 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 takers come in and they they crush the value and then you rebuild it. And the same thing has happened in a real sense with everything from I, I it's you know, that, that's the nature of the world in which we live. And, and our goal is not to become popular because be, being popular with the powers of this world means being popular with. You have to choose. Are you building for this world or are you building for the next? And. You know, we're preserving the flame 
while other people dance around the fire. And, you know, we're keeping those embers, we're keeping blowing on them so that when, when those who cannot create but can only mock move on to greener pastures, we'll still be here. Uh, Luke Farrell says, I've never played Traveler. I enjoy the story he spins. I even sent an alarm at stupid o'clock to try to catch live streams. Well, well, thank you for that, Luke. I, you can always watch the post streams, you know. A uh, good example of why gatekeeping them out is needed, says Bradford Walker. Yeah, I should point out, you know, oh, that was one of the bullet points I wanted to hit. I thought Bradford Walker, he has a wonderful blog. You should watch that. He said, you know, these people aren't playing the same game as we are. They're not actually playing the game of Dungeons and Dragons. They're playing the brand. And that's part of the whole ostracization game is that they wear the D&D t-shirt and they let everybody know I'm on team D&D because they're more interested in the trademark and the brand than they are the experience. If you put D&D on, say, an improv theater troupe that has D20s that occasionally influence the way the plot goes, but they're telling stories in their improv. You put D&D &D on that, then people will say, yeah, I'm team d and I'm going to watch that. And that's not a criticism of critical role, by the way. That's not a criticism of people. We are social creatures. We are social beasts and we need tribes. Tribes are good. It's good to have collectives and it's good to have friends. It's good to have social circles. That's not a criticism. I have to give a lot of credit to critical role. They saw a, an unserved market for people who want to watch other people pretend to play D&D. &D. They are the judges guild to our Gary Gygax. Gary said, why would anybody want to pay me to do their imagining for them? This is a game that's a tool for imagination. And Judges Guild wisely said, there's tons of people that would love for us to imagine things for them and made you know, pretty good money. And Gary Gygax was so won over that, um, you know, we all know what happened, right? Um, but the point is that those people that are wearing the trademark they, they don't care what D&D &D becomes. They will be playing the trademark. We're going to continue with the previous editions of the game. We're going to continue with od and We're going to continue with ad and &D, three core books. We're going to continue looking at old games like Proto Traveler or Classic Traveler. And we're going to continue to play the actual tabletop game itself. Dice Tales asks... What are the political nonsense that's out there has no place in a game? Some people have too much free time. Well, I and Dice Tales, I, I disagree. Um, I, I, th one of the reasons why games, video games, and tabletop games are so important to people, and it's so important that they get to decide what is involved with those, is that it's practice. It's, it's a scrimmage. It's not a real game. We're, we're going to play a little bit of a, it's, it's a, it's a way to hone your skills in a field that is has lower stakes. If I make a mistake in judgment in this risk reward situation here in the tabletop game, then I can take that out into the real world where the stakes are higher. It's a way to program your mind. And one of the reasons why video game makers today really love that demonic trolley problem and they hide it and they put it in all kinds of things. Hey, gamer, here's a choice. Do you murder the child? Or do you murder the society? Which one are you going to murder? And then you win by turning off the game and never giving them money again. They want to train you to accept the lesser of two evils. Because as long as you're accepting evil in this low stakes area, then when you go out to where there's high stakes and you're presented with, this, with a conundrum, which of these evils will you accept? you will already be pre-programmed to simply shrug and say, I'm going to take one of these two evils rather than standing up and saying, stop, this is not a choice I'm going to make. It's important that you train your mind. And we do that in Traveler, in Dungeons and Dragons. We train ourselves to understand how, how evil people think and how they operate and what tactics they use. And we utilize those tactics as a means and method of recognizing when they're being used against us in the real world. You absolutely should put political situations into your games to help people understand the challenges that they'll face in the real world. And this is part of the reason why we, 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 we talk about current thing from time to time. John City, congratulations from New Mexico. Hey, bro. 
Thanks for coming by. I appreciate the kind of words. Three minute videos. You need more subscribers, Charles Latour. Yeah, I, it's it's a good little, you know, uh, Charles does miniatures. Hex Encounter. He does all kinds of things. Uh, Dice Tales. I've seen some genuine hate speech, anti-Semitism, and all kinds of bad things in gaming forums. Makes me sad for a hobby, which started out as a refuge for nerds and outcasts. Uh, I, I... I don't know what those words mean. They've become so devalued, um, to, to be honest with you. Uh, think words like, um, you know, all the isms are are simply talismans that people touch, and they they use them as a ward against bad ideas. I've seen so many things called uh, the tisms that simply are not, but they're just again they're a lever that can be used to pull you out of the tribe. Yeah, Crossface is the guy. Thank you, Jeffro. Crossface is is running fifth edition with teenagers, but he's implemented all of the things that make the game uh, that help honor the wargaming roots of the game. He's got them running patrons. He's got them running in one to one time. He's got them thinking about not just the gold piece cost, but the time cost. I, I need to get these three things accomplished, and I've only got time to do two. And I've got asymmetrical information. Uh, compared to my rivals who are sitting with me at the table working against me over here and working for me over there. That is an astonishingly effective way to build empathy and to teach, train people. One of the things that, that this hobby, and we all know that, is that this hobby trains you to get into the minds of other people. It's one of the reasons why those of us here on the on, on our side of the political aisle are so much better at it than those on the other side of the political aisle, because they assume that their thought patterns are your thought patterns. And it never occurs to them that you may have a different way of looking at the world. Uh, Luke Farrell, isn't it called fantasy and role playing? Can you imagine playing a game where we had to play ourselves with the GM judging us? Yeah, yeah, it, it's a fair point. Um, Dice Tales says, I'm referring to the ad hominem things people will say when they should be debating the quality and merits of the games. Yeah, there's there's so much to discuss in here, and there's so little time that I, I'd much rather be talking about this. But but again, I, I you know I, I choose not to play pirates and traveler because I don't I I I mean I can and and at some point I will, um, but you know it's I I'd rather train myself to defend the innocent and to stand up and, and, you know, work for justice. Good evening, Eric. It's fairly new, caught up on the traveler and still to go on the AD&D. AD&D is on hiatus because I'm away from my books. As you can see, this is not my bedroom with the, it's nice. I mean, this, that, this is a nice little painting. It, it's, it's freshly cleaned. It's, it's not bad, but I'm really looking forward to getting home. Um, RPGs were cool in the eighties. Yeah. People forget this. Everybody loved them. Uh, heads, preps, jocks, everyone had monster manuals, issues of ADQ. You don't sell a million copies of a book in a country of 200 million people without selling to every pe every demographic. Uh, th this whole story of D and D was always for nerds. I don't buy that. I, that's a, that's an old wives tale that doesn't comport with my experience. Now, as with every single hobby, we've talked about this before, as with every single hobby in the world, there are people that get way too into it. And the hobby did somewhat self-select for the high IQ card crowd, with which there's a, a Venn overlap with the people who are, are better at math than they are at social games, which again, makes them, you know, makes them uh, prime targets for the current, the current thing. But there are... Being a quarterback is really hard. Have you ever tried to be a quarterback and have to remember all of the different people going in all the different directions and try to anticipate where the 11 defenders are going and to have to trust your teammates? Like being you, There are, well, it's a skill like any other, and, you know, our time is limited, but it takes an enormous amount of cognitive load to be a quarterback and to react with that speed and to, to know all of the plays. And, and that's true for most positions. If you're a running back and you've got an assignment on a given play, you still have to know the entire playbook. And you still have to recognize when a play is broken. And you still have to know when to deviate from the plan, when to pick up the blitz, when you are expecting the, you know, the, the strong side, it's coming weak side, and you were supposed to get the handoff, but there was a, there was a mishandled, uh, uh, mishandled snap and, oh, by the way, we audible, and I only had two seconds to adjust to find out where my strong side safety that I'm supposed to be picking up is. And, oh, there was a mishandled snap, which means 
the jocks are not as dumb as you think they are. Uh, you know, they've, they've, got, they've channeled their intellect into a different skill set than you, but that doesn't make them necessarily any dumber than you. That's a myth that's been propagated by writers who are incapable of putting themselves in the shoes of a jock. Uh, so be, be careful with that one. I, some of the people like, and you, you, there's, there's a little bit of a bubble aspect there. Yeah. If, I, I, look, I, 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 I had, I had issues in high school. I had whole subscriptions of issues. I like to think I've gotten better. The people I ran with were definitely towards the three standard deviations crowd. And it was a typical 1980s high school experience. When I went to Gen Con in 1991 and I sat across the table from a smoking hot chick who was playing a cleric and doing the whole like theater kid thing, but she still got the things. And, and sitting next to her was not her boyfriend, but he was he was like 240, six foot four. Great guy. It was a really eye opening experience for me. And I realized that this is not, you know, all of the things that you see on TV, they're not, they're not just because it's on TV doesn't mean it's true, guys. Um, there were a couple of football players. Mighty Iraq is, I, I will always post the uh, the double down, the, the backup. There were a couple of football players in our AD&D group back in 86. Nerds, stoners, jocks. Yeah, I played one of the guys, the strong safety on the team, actually. We started a new campaign with him. He wound up, um, I, I loaned him all of my books like sophomore year of college, and I never got them back, which, which is fine. I, I just got new books. I think you're two minutes away from unironically saying the best part of d d is friendship and introspection we did along the way. You know, the real treasure is the gold that we earned for tre for experience points along the way. Um, I, th but that's, I I'm going to steal a line from a friend. Role-playing games are engines for making friendships. And the people who are best at making friendships are the best at role-playing games. Unironically, that is absolutely true. Uh, so there we go. Yeah, totally destroys any role play potential. My buddies in the 80s, all the girls chipped in and got a monster manual too. Man, when you've got girls buying you game stuff, that gets the thumbs up for me. Um, let's talk about the second. That's that's like 40 minutes of that. Um, I do want to talk about one other thing, and I'm going to do the fancy pants. Look at this, man. Uh, it's almost like I'm getting better at this after four years. Monetization. I want to warn you guys, I'm looking at now that I've I've reached the big time, 5,000 subscribers. Well, look, by the end of the year, I should be at about 6,000. Uh, I'm picking up about 150 subscribers a year. So, you know, by the time I reach that five-year milestone, you know, I'll, I'll, I'm getting there. And it starts to pick up speed. And at some point, I need to be able to justify to the wife, look, I know I'm spending a lot of time on this. Um but there, there's something to be done. And also, I the, the big thing for me is that I am entirely a self-funded outfit. I I received a few. I here, here's what I've received for what I've done. The the guys at um the guy oh let me grab it real quick. This is I actually have both of them. Oh my gosh, this is hysterical. I actually have both sets. Check this out. The only person who has ever come to me and said, hey, would you, if I send you something, will you talk about it? Is Anthems of War right here, which, it, oh, it's, it's reverse. Wait, is it backwards? I think it is. Let's see. Hold on. Uh, I'm going to switch this around so you can actually read it. Camera. And then we come down here. No, stop mirroring my camera so you can read it. There, there we go. Okay. Anthems of War. So this is the only product that I have directly received with a request to play it on camera. And so I, I flagged that for the first few videos that, you know, this is a review copy and I've had a lot of fun with it. It's a game I might not have played otherwise. I, I ordered a host of stuff from Wiley Games was very good to me. This is the other guys that have supported the channel. But in the four years that I've been doing this, I have taken no money. I have taken this is the product right here. And, and, and this wasn't even a, hey, if we send you stuff, will you play it? It was, they had seen the channel. They were fans of the channel. And as a thank you for the content, I, I did a couple of videos on, um, which one was it? I don't, I, I think it was the first generic one. So, but, but I, when I ordered a, another batch, there was a lot more stuff that I didn't order as a thank you. And that was not a, there was not a quid pro quo. It was just a, hey, I'm fans of you. I want some of your stuff. Hey, I'm fans of you. Here's some extra. Um, 
but I'd like to move into the monetization, but I have a couple of, I have a couple of things I want to do. One is I want to reinvest. I, I'm not asking for money. Uh, well, okay. The breakdown will be whatever I bring in from monetization will go to dump into the channel for the most part. We'll, we'll keep a little bit out just as a, as a thank you to like, you know, take the wife out for a nice dinner sometime. Uh, but I do want to reinvest. Um, I, I have a choice. Do I want to buy more miniatures for content or do I want to buy a new camera? And for me, the answer is always going to be more miniatures. I, you know, the camera will be obsolete in a little while, but miniatures will last forever. Uh, with a little bit of financial backing from viewers like you, we can upgrade the laptop and it won't take me eight hours to, it won't take me an hour and a half to edit a 20 minute video and then eight hours to publish it and then eight hours to upload. If I can get a real laptop, then maybe we can even do some picture in picture where when we, when we do the, our, our tabletop, when, instead of just my hands on the screen, on the, on the table, you know, my hairy knuckles writing stuff down. Maybe we can even put a little, a little miniature, you know, Mr. Wargaming right down here, right down here in the corner where, where I can start to interact with you and you can see my handsome face. One of the supreme ironies is that I, just so you know, I have, I have done professional modeling in my life. People have paid me to stand next to their product because they thought my handsome face would rub off and make their product look better. Not a lot, nothing big. Obviously, I haven't done like the, the cover of men's GQ or anything, but you know, kind of low grade industrial stuff. Uh, and, and it always amuses me that that you've got this tiny little wargaming channel with a, a semi pro. For those of you who don't know, I have a I have an IMDB page. You can go check it out. Uh, I, I'm a little day player on on network television shows. I get a line or two every like three years. Uh, this guy has this tiny little channel and then you go over to like the, the big channels and they're all these like, I, I'm not insulting them, but they're all typical gamers. We'll just put it like that. All right. And so, and every thumbnail has them down in the corner. Oh man. I, oh, you guys are going to screen cap that. They're going, Oh man. That's going to be fun. I can't wait to see that one. They're all soy facing down in the corner of their video because for them, it's all about the brand. They're building their brand. They're all about, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. And you know, aside from episodes like today, I would much rather be looking at this. And I think you would too. But we can, you know, we can kind of do a little bit of a nod to the to the modern thing and maybe do a little thumbnail in the corner like uh, Dunder Moose does that. Go subscribe to Dunder Moose only has 200 subscribers. Why are you not subscribing to Dunder Moose? He's a good guy. Uh, so all of that said, right, there's there's a couple of things. So I want to reinvest. I want to keep it pay what you want. I want to maintain true independence both for me and for you. I'm not sure how to do that yet. I'm, I'm toying with the idea of doing like an NPR style like funding drive. Like, hey, this is the week where I log on and I do a live stream and we, we, we you know, I don't know if you can turn the monetization on and off for YouTube. But that may be a thing where look, or or we do like a a quick, um, not well <laughs> that that that's a separate issue where we do just a quick one time thing. Hey guys, let me raise five thousand dollars now. We can shut up about money for, for the rest of the year, right? And then it, you know like every six months we go, hey, this is what I'm looking to get. This is what I'm looking to upgrade. This is the help I need from you guys to make that happen. And if we can beat that, you know maybe set up some Kickstarter tiers. You know if look if you guys generate a hundred thousand dollars in revenue then I'm going to have to write a, a, a miniature war game. Now, I don't want to do that because I don't think I'm very good at it. You guys have seen the scenarios I prepare. They are busted. Uh, but that might be one of the ways to do that. And, and we may be able to come up with some means by which we say, look, if, if we generate you know enough money to buy a camera, we're done. And oh, by the way, if it goes gangbusters and we have a lot of money, then I can take a week off and, and I don't know, maybe even raise enough to travel to one of these conventions where I can just start you know, messing with people. But we have to talk about, remember when we talked about the current thing for a long time? The current thing puts me on the outs with mainstream conventional hobbying. There is no doubt that if I was a different demographic that YouTube would be doing a lot more to push the channel for me. This subscriber count that you see down here below my, below my thing, this is entirely based upon you guys publicizing my channel. This is entirely based upon the fact that you have this one little corner 
that hasn't been co-opted yet, that hasn't been driven off of YouTube. And part of the problem with being in this corner of the culture and being uh, in opposition to the, the powers and principalities that run things in the world today is that we are, the, the deeper we go into that world, the more they get their hooks into you. If I monetize this channel on YouTube, and, and this is true as we get bigger and bigger as a, as a, as a collective, as you know, the joy of wargaming and those who enjoy it, the bigger the channel gets, the more fire we're going to draw and the more people are going to start looking for reasons to have me thrown off. And if I set up the channel so that I'm making money off of our hosts, then the host will be able to, to put more pressure on me. And I don't ever want to be in that position. There are a few things, for those of you that are new here, need to understand. I cannot use Patreon. I, and I've talked about this a little bit in the past. I'll go over it again just briefly. When I went to investigate Patreon, I read their terms of service. I highly recommend you go read their terms of service. Their terms of service explicitly say, if you use our product, you are agreeing to waive all consumer protections. You can't do that. That's not the way consumer protections work. Imagine if Ford said, by driving our car off the lot, you agree to waive all of your consumer protections. It wouldn't stand up in court. For some reason, because it's the internet and because they have lawyers and I don't, they get away with it. I took them to arbitration and the judge said, you don't have a case. You're using their product. You're obviously fine with not being having any of the consumer protections and they haven't violated any of your consumer rights now. I said, well, Demanding I give up my consumer rights is a violation of my rights. He said, I don't care. You don't have a case. So I can't use Patreon. Uh, I cannot use, I refuse to use Indiegogo because they will throw me off because I voted for the wrong guy or because I, I, I told the wrong joke or because I was disrespectful to the wrong person. This cuts back to the fact that an accus we live in a Kafka-esque world where if you are accused of something and you defend yourself, that's used as evidence that you are guilty. We live in the, the Salem witch trials, except the witches were real and they really did what they did. And uh, the, the accusation is enough to destroy you these days. So I, I, I need to be careful how I'm raising this money. As long as I make no money, as long as I'm, you know, just this tiny little channel, we're safe. But the bigger I get, the, the greater the risk. Uh, and I know for a fact that if I try to raise funds using the standard outlets that it's not going to work, that they will play the game where they take your money and then they shut down the fundraising. And then in a lot of cases, they'll just keep your money. They'll say, yeah, no, he engages in the bad speech. He's one of the bad people that believes the bad things. So we don't allow that. By the way, we're keeping your money and you have no recourse because as I said, simply by agreeing to use their service, you have given up all of your rights to consumer protection. So it's too dangerous. I'm not going to do it. There are a couple of other uh, safer alternatives. Subscribestar is one people have mentioned. Substack is one that people have mentioned, which I, I haven't looked into. It would simply be a case of basically setting up a Substack and saying, you know, hiding links behind that paywall. And I don't want to do that because I also think that it's worthwhile making sure that everything that is produced is free and visible to everyone. Um, I, the, the idea of paid content is appealing, but I'm not sure exactly how that worked. The other thing plan I've been toying with, and, and I'm not looking at the, the chat just yet. Let me, let me finish this thought. Um, the other thing I'm thinking about doing is actually doing kind of a hostage thing where, or like a straw poll thing where I say, look, um, there is a huge market for brand X out there. And I'm not particularly, you know, you'd have to pay me to play that game. Well, here's the opportunity. And, and the thinking is something along the lines of Warhammer 40K. We're an independent channel. We focus on independent games, but we could grow huge and expose more people to these wonderful, charming little games if we are able to make greater inroads into the conventional audiences. And the way to do that might be to say, look, I'm going to run a funding and if I reach X number of dollars, if I am successful, and I don't know what that would be, five, you know, 
you'd have to pay me to play this game. Well, here's a way to do it. If there is enough interest, if people are willing to put, I don't know, I'm just making this up, $10,000 into the pot, then I will take that $10,000 and I will buy a half of a, of a Warhammer 40K army. I'm kidding, of course, but I will use that money to invest in proper miniature wargaming stuff. And, you know, we can play some, we can do some games workshop stuff. You guys are paying for it and I'm happy to provide what the customer wants, but you're going to have to pay for me to play the things that I wouldn't play on my own. So that's the other option is, and that may be the paywall is, look, we'll continue to spend the same amount of time and resources as we always have. But the resources that we spend, we're going to carve off a chunk for the paying customers who want to see Brand X on the channel. And then those paying customers are more likely to stick around for the fun little weird things. The things like, um, uh, oh, you know who else didn't, you know who, I, I, let me let me actually have one more caveat. I, I was offered some free loot from the guys over at... Um, uh, Oh man, the guys back in New Jersey, great guys. They make the uh, uh, Mythic Earth, uh, Mythico Studios. They said, "Hey, you know what? Since you're you to do the, take the box," and I said, "I don't want to do that for two reasons. One, they're you know they've been around for a few years, but they're 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 the little guy. They're they're going up. They're they're wading into the the arena." And I wanted to support them. I really enjoy their product. I think they're good guys. They've got a good product. They're doing all of the things that we want people to do when it comes to um, honoring and respecting underserved cultures in a way that is respectful, not just to their cultures, but to all cultures. I, they're really doing it right. And I want to support them financially. I, and I'm, I'm really, it, it bothers me that I have issues that I haven't been able to get that stuff on the paint table and I haven't been able to get it on to the 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 on on camera uh, it, it's an interesting game with a lot going for it and i want to share that with you guys and maybe we can if we run a little bit of a of a of monetization but oh see it's the current thing still right so monetization um but again the the three rules are it, I, I got it's got to be pay what you want it it's got to be you know as non intrusive as possible it's got to be um, reinvested into the channel and it has to be, oh, that's the, the, the second, there's two th third things. And it has to allow us to maintain our independence as, you know, an independent producer that we're not always constantly chasing after the next big thing, that we're not running on that treadmill and constantly trying to turn out content just for the sake of content. Well, all that said, let's cut back to the comments. Let's cut back to the comment section. You guys are the reason we're here. Uh, if it's custodies, you're right on that. Yeah, they, yeah. What's the joke that um, Henry Cavill, who's going to be executive producing the Warhammer 40K content for Amazon, has already spent half of his budget on uh, a custodies army? Uh, where I got to pick up where we were at. Uh, let's see. In before Shadow Raids Legends. Yeah, it's. We're going to let, let me go back. Let me go because now, now if I try to point to things, it's going to be. I can figure that out. Door, window. Yeah, we're good. Uh, it was fine. Let's see. You've got to play the Trekking Through History games. Just played it tonight. Uh, who, who's this handsome lad? Hey, there's a familiar name. What's up? My brother from the same mother checking in the house. I really appreciate that, Steve. You've got to play the Trekking Through History games. Just played it tonight with my family, and it was great. Not really a role-playing game, but it's still really fun. We don't do a whole lot of board games here on the channel, but, you know, you are a guy who I trust and value and love deeply and would do anything for, including play the sort of game that I don't usually play. Uh, Dice Tales. As a woke guy, i got to point out that flipping the text around so it could be read normally is discriminating against uh, people with reading difficulties. That's great. And I have to, and again, it, it, it's so clunky, but, you know, there are certain words that, that are trigger words. Uh, Pounds Cleveland, what about a miniature camera? I'd love to do, like, more, like, like miniatures eye view stuff. That would be great. You know, we got the, the best hands in gaming. Uh, Peter Hansen, screen caps. I know, I, I soy faced. I love the two millimeter miniature games. I discovered the channel while looking for two by two Napoleonics. I think we're probably into, let me switch the banner here. Uh, I'm just going to go to Q&A and I don't have to think about it. 
uh, two millimeter. You know, I'm actually thinking about when I, I, I bought a bunch of two millimeter moderns to use for um, Spanish Civil War. And boy, howdy, if, if, if you want to know when I'm going to draw a huge amount of fire from the freaks who want to make it illegal to be a normal person, wait until I start doing some Spanish Civil War war gaming. I think I want to go to three millimeter for that because it's the, the well, the uh, it, it, I, I, my, my old man eyes, and I just think visually, I think the three millimeter has a lot more going for it than the two millimeter. Uh, locals is a possibility. Yeah. Being on the outs of the main hobby is a good thing. It, it definitely is. It gives us more freedom of movement. Um, what's illegal? Uh, no, nah, I think you should stay small. Imagine 4,000 chats doom scrolling by every video. Yeah. You know, we could do the, we could do the, you guys throw miniatures up and I could do the, I could do the eating it and, and saying things like yum, ice cream. And, and I don't have the, I don't have the, well, here we, we, you know, if I get enough super chats, I can I can undo the I can undo. There we go. Is that a little better? Right. We can get the little. By the way, I am one of the scapular bros. I don't just wear this for the for the thing. Right. Oh, you know, oh, if, if, if I get enough gold coins, we can do a little bit more cleavage. And when money gets involved, things get hard and usually weird. It does, but it doesn't have to. Uh, I think. Listen. One of the reasons we went through the whole current thing, you guys are war gamers. You guys are into strategy and tactics. There are solutions to these problems, and we're going to find them, and we're going to reinvent this means of presenting fun stuff to the hobby. Uh, Eric is is using a, a derogatory term for our hosts, which I, I, I cannot disagree with. Uh, works for software. Look at the history of shrink wrap law. You agree to a license before you can read it. Oh, man. And the courts have upheld that. Yeah. Uh, next time I order too many minis and the wife gets mad, I will ship them to you. That will be my. But see, that's part of the problem. And I've had. Uh, fair enough. A lot of people have offered, hey, can I send you some stuff that I think you could use? And the answer is I don't have any space right now. I, I'm almost maxed out. About the only thing I really have room for is a couple of more armies of two millimeter and, and unless I get rid of some things, and that may be the way, I mean, we're war gamers. We know how this works. This is the cycle. You complete a project, you sell it to the next guy, and then you start a new project. That may be one of the things that, that uh, we use to generate some revenue so we can get some fresh content in. Corvinus says the mainstream Warhammer crowd would get confused and upset when you uploaded non-Warhammer videos. I, you know, Ash Barker manages to do a pretty good job at that. You know, he, he straddles that line and he even plays, but again, he's, he's playing like, there are, there is a huge library of games that I won't play because I respect the wishes of the developer. And Battletech has told me, don't buy our stuff. So Battletech is a huge IP and I'm out. I, they don't want me to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to fight them on that. They don't want my money. That's fine. There are plenty of other people who do want my money. Uh, and, and I think that it's still important. You know, it, it, I, it's, it's still important to, to you've got to go behind enemy lines. And, and I don't, you know, Games Workshop's not the enemy. But you have to go out into strange new lands and you have to proselytize this stuff. And there are people out there languishing in the Games Workshop wilds that can be saved. We can reach them. We can rebuild them better than before. But to do that, we have to engage with, with what's brought them into the hobby first. And I'm, I'm just, I'm not sure how to do that just yet. We'll get there. Uh, the Games Workshop channels are established. Perfect painting, perfect scenery. You built this with two millimeter battles of Bumville. Yeah, the Broman campaign. You know, we you, a little bit of pa paper and pencils is all you need. Uh, Tag says, we raise money and you will dojo storm g dubs nerds and make them play other games yeah uh it's not the brother says steven it's the mini it's my favorite nephew it's not his old man it's my favorite nephew he's a gamer uh john you need a late night screen cam for your for your 2 a.m streams why just yeah whoa, we gotta do the necessary zoom right hey we're not on blaine's world uh, I like that, Jeffro. It's Geek Gab time. Wait, Geek Gab is going live on Dornall, so I'm going to wrap up here pretty soon. 3.56. Yeah, they're going live here in four minutes. 
All right, Eric. So the, to answer this question, because we're into the, the uh, Q and A, the two AM stands. So there are two millimeter stands. I get my two millimeter miniatures primarily from irregular miniatures. They come in little strips. And then if you go on Amazon and look for one inch craft squares, those are about a nickel a piece. I want, no, yeah, about a nickel a piece. You can get a hundred of them for like ten bucks. Uh, and then you just glue them down, paste them up, and you're ready to go. Uh, Peter Hansen, the Spanish Civil War is quite interesting on both the small and large scale. Well, the idea there, uh, moving into the future, I'd like to do some more modern day war gaming. Once gunpowder is invented, I, there's like a period where I kind of, I clench up when things get, when you get into combined arms beyond horse foot guns, I, I don't have a lot of experience and I would be fumbling my way through a lot of it. And I've really struggled with trying to figure out how to build a set of figures that will allow me to play over a broad enough swath of history because the the changes are so rapid that it becomes a little bit harder and it's it's weird because ultimately a squad is a squad is a squad are you gaming world war one are you gaming moderns a squad is a squad but how you organize the the forces you know, how many squads do a platoon you know how, how you do that and how you do it in a way that that is presentable you know it's kind of a i i the, in my mind right now and and as i get closer to to healing the damage um i will uh, I'll, I'll spend more time and resources on it but the idea right now is to have like a red force and a blue force and to have the red force be uh small numbers of elite units and the blue force being larger numbers of smaller of, of lower quality troops so that you've got those two different flavors uh, and organize it in a way that you can do everything from World War I up through, you know, modern day where you say, look, I know these tanks are Sherman tanks, but today they're going to be Matildas or they're going to be sure we're going to treat them as though they are Abrams. Uh, and, and, you know, using proxies across the board. And then the question becomes, well, which, which era would make the most sense for that? And we, and it, it all comes down to one of the things that might would that I really like is if you look at I don't know if he's doing it for Warlord, but um, that not Copplestone. Oh, who is it? Who are the brothers? They have a nice. Uh, let, let me Google this up real quick. Uh, um, who who are the Foundry guys? Foundry Miniatures. Um, they sell 20. Who are the big? Uh, help me out here, chat. Uh, the big sculptors for Foundry. They, they have a generic, like, army man unit that I think would be wonderful. Uh, and, and they're just like kind of like early to mid 20th century figures in like 25 millimeter, I want to say. Um, who, God, who are these guys? Um, the foundry, blah, 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 warmonger foundry. Uh, it's not Brian Ansel, Brian. And it, it's not Brian Ansel. Who is it? Who are the guys that are doing all the sculpting for warlord miniatures these days? Um, start here. Let me go to the chat. You guys are smarter than I am. Um, the Perrys. Thank you. The Perry brothers. Um, one of those guys, uh, uh, Corvinus, gets the no prize. Were you the first one? Uh, Luke Farrell, he nailed it to Alan and Michael Perry. Yeah. If you're familiar, go. Uh, um, oh, you know what I could do? Now that I'm doing this like live and on a laptop or something, Perry miniatures. Let me show you. Um, modern day. Figures. Maybe I can Google it and find them real quick. Uh, and then I can share my screen because I'm cool like that. Oh, they're not going to show up because I'm using Bing and Bing is terrible. Bing is an embarrassment. Anyway, go, go, go look it up on your own. You, you guys are smart. You guys, you guys can handle it. I don't want to slow the stream down any more than I already have. Uh, Peter Hansen, I use some paper counters for hex based war games. They're mostly timeless since they use NATO counters. Yeah, I want to pick up the. Um, I have the digital copy of the Portable Wargaming Guide to Spanish Civil War by 
port and again i gotta i gotta revive look it up portable war game spanish he is a little bit wrong on the issue of who were the good guys on that one but not not like overtly and insultingly so it's uh it's uh you guys have probably already already said it um wargaming miscellany yeah that's that's the blog random thoughts where's you put your name on this guys jeez it's not nick hubbin mm -mm -mm -mm. my portable war game where's about the author here i'm gonna find it i'm gonna find it nothing could be gun done contrary to what could or would be done in actual war from the rules that's by by fred jane though uh, links to my website. It's Colonial, Interbellum, Portable, War Game. It's not John Curry. Come on, brother. Favorites. You got to put your about right at the top. People need this. Robert Cordery. Got it before. Did I get it before the chat? Uh, does any... Did, did it, I think I did it. I think I beat the chat for once. Bob Cordery. His uh, Portable Spanish Civil War. It's a hex base, but you can convert it to inches pretty good. Uh, by the way, we got 44 people in the, in the chat. 44. Yeah, I should have reversed it. 44... It's almost a record. 49 is our record. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to see you guys here. You guys are awesome. Uh, where are we at in the Spanish Civil War? John, da, 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 since Q&A, can I question? Is it better if I question? Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, Anthony. I appreciate it. We named a system after him. We're going to develop that later this week. Uh, the money aspect gets weird if you turn talking on the internet into a full-time job. I'm not sure I want to go full-time, right? As long as I have the day job, then if I get canned from this, I just shrug. I spend more time with my kids. It's not a problem. Uh, Caleb Hines says, how's the eye been doing? Well, let's, you tell me. Um, I have seen no, can, can you see, can you see, for those of you who don't know, can you see that I have a spare pupil in the upper corner of it? There's been no motion. It's a workplace injury and people don't, doctors don't want to work on those because, so in America, for those of you who don't know, uh, we have a, a two-tiered system, the system for those who can pay and the system for those who are on some kind of assistance. And so the two major assistance programs are Medicare and Medicaid. Medicare is for retirees. Medicaid is for those who fall below some income threshold. And you get free medicine, you get free medical care uh, with a lot of strings attached because it's politics, of course. And the Medicare and Medicaid, they determine what the going rates are for medical care. Now, on the private side, they can ask whatever they want. And if you pay it, great, they get to keep it. Uh, but when you find yourself in a situation where an insurance company is paying for the care, then it falls to that lowest common denominator rate. And unfortunately, that's the, the segment that I am in. And all of the best, all of the people that are worth their salt, that make really good money fixing a very difficult situation like this don't want to do it for the peanuts that you make on by working for um for the medicaid rates so finding someone that is capable of doing this and is willing to do it for the the standard price ceiling government rates that's been a bit of a trick i'm hoping that we'll be able to get it done by uh fourth of july i would like one year being the one-eyed beast is is enough for me, um, and and hopefully I'll let you know. I, I have a, a nurse advocate who's looking looking into that right now, but I'm I'm hopeful. Uh, you know, keep praying for me because they're working. We're seeing some movement, even if it's not great. Maybe more games using the original Necromunda rules would help you get noticed by the old Hammer fans. Yeah, there's a lot of people I've been asked to do um, the fantasy version of Necromunda. The what's the town called? Uh, I never played it back in the day, and I'm not sure that I would have anything to contribute beyond what other people are doing. And, and I'm a little disconcerted by the fact that it's called like Hellstorm 28, what it is. You should play some pirates, like from the movie Ice Pirates. Yeah, Ogre and GEV with the original Winchell Chung silhouettes. It's timeless. It's classic for a reason. But again, that would mean giving money to Steve Jackson Games, and they hate me, so I don't want to give them money. Uh, I thought about getting out of Squad Leader, but the chits and maps to do weird war but it's very deep yeah we all have more time than we have we all have more time excuse me we all have more ideas than we have time and the bucket list never gets any shorter does it 
Have a good night, Tag 1080. Appreciate having you here. John City, Ogre GEV is awesome. I love the miniatures of the Winchell Tongue. And Ogre GEV is one of those sophisticated games. There's there's so much going on under the hood that, you know, you could play it over and over and over again. And every time you play it, you realize that how much there is to it. 50 millimeter Peter Pig. I just found on the YouTube finally showed me Peter Pig. They have a YouTube channel. Did you know that? And they go over, they've got like really good detailed looks at all of the games they use. Uh, I haven't played any of them because they're all uh, grid based games. And I'm much more, I'm more of a ruler guy. You know, this, this is my jam right here. But uh, it's a good company. The 15 millimeter is a great scale. I'd love to. Uh, does anybody make a Hemingway movie? Your Spanish Civil War is incomplete without him. Uh, well, I mean, if you want to talk about sitting in a Paris hotel and drinking and talking to people that experienced it, yeah, go for it. Uh, sorry, I'm not a huge Hemingway fan. Sorry, guys. Uh, congratulations, getting on five thousand. Hey, yeah, Macho, take care of that. Take care of that wife of yours. You've, you've had a rough time lately. We appreciate it. Um, uh, Macho Mandolf is running. I'm I'm doing some gaming with Macho Mandolf on the download. It's been a tremendous amount of fun. Warhammer Disc Wars was interesting. Uh, says Sammy 3D with the tokens representing minis. Yeah, Disc Wars. I, I again, I missed that one. That was at a time where I thought I'm not jumping on this treadmill, man. I, I'm not jumping into another collectible game because I just I don't have time. And I know uh, I you you've seen the channel. We like to go deep, and it seemed like every time I got into a game and it started to get interesting. Like I finally got through that that entry level hump. And I really started to dive into and appreciate the, the intricacies of the game. Everybody moved on to something else. And I was like, but I'm, I'm still, I'm still doing this edition. I, I haven't exhausted it yet. So I get left behind a lot because I'm a little bit more um, focused on what's going on right now. And I'm not worried about keeping up with the Joneses, obviously. Uh, Peter Hansen, the U.S. healthcare system is not very good. I don't, it's, you know, it, if, if you can afford it, it's great. It's the best in the world. There's a reason people bring their, you know, there's, there's a reason people come here for it. Uh, but the funding is all, it's all broken and out of whack, unfortunately. Uh, Russian Civil War, Reds and Whites. Well, yeah, that's, Dace Tales, that's a great point, you know, because um, you're talking about a difference of like 10 years. So there's no reason if I do a, if I do a, a red versus blue, modern day force then we can use that for spanish civil war we can use it for the russian tragedy and and you know a host of things uh mega buster shepherd hasn't gone to the doctor in three years cannot afford it uh you might be surprised um you know call around shop around we when we had our first child and then um actually it was the my, my second child was a special needs child and uh we we had insurance and um they have all kinds of ways that they can help you, but they don't like to. And if you are persistent enough uh, that we went in and, and we explained the situation and we said, can we set up a payment plan? And when, when the full details of the situation became available, the hospital went, you know what? Don't worry about it. They just erased it. It was a debt. It was, it, it's, it's a weird system. They say, look, okay, you got to get surgery. It's going to be a hundred thousand dollars. And if you have insurance through your workplace, the workplace insurance goes, that's ridiculous. Now, so what they're hoping is you'll just pay the $100,000 and they have some mechanisms to try to bully you into doing it. But if you have an insurance company, they go, that's ridiculous. You know darn well, this is only a $20,000 procedure. So we're only going to pay 20,000. And the hospital will go, yeah, okay, we'll take the 20,000, we'll call it good. Like there's a whole, but, but we're not supposed to accept that there's a whole level of negotiation that applies here. I don't, it's weird. It's, it's, it, yeah, it's completely broken, but you know, the government's involved. So what are you going to do? Go to a private hospital in Turkey. The care is good and affordable compared to the U S seriously. Yeah. If you can afford a pl plane trip, plane trip to Turkey says Corvinus, uh, that, you know, that's true in a lot of places, but you know, one of the other things to be, be aware of is that one of the reasons that care is so expensive in, in the U S is that everything you spend you're subsidizing the development of the technologies that other countries don't have to develop. One of the reasons that that there are so many medications available today is that Americans, through their health system, develop them. And then a country like Canada goes, yeah, I know that your return on investment is X, but we're only going to pay you a dollar a pill. And so, you know, the companies say, yeah, we'll take your dollar. 
when you know in in a an adjust and equitable world everybody would be paying two dollars for the pill instead canada gets it for one and america's got to pay 10 for it because we're paying for the development costs and and that's it's it's a lot more complicated than that but that is one of the ingredients that goes into the that gets baked into the cake that is the american system uh let's see play some traveler snapshot yeah uh, jeffro the other thing you know what i would love to do I thought about one of my first Hex Encounter War games was One Page Bulge. It's a wonderful little game. It's delightful. You play it in an hour. It does everything that a game needs to do. But I looked into it, and apparently they did the full, like, full, you know, the big ogre box, the, the big 80-pound box of ogre. They did a bespoke version of One Page Bulge, which is which is a, a, a heck of a victory lap for Steve Jackson. But that was right about the time he said, you know, if, if you don't support the current thing, which was the overturning of of uh, Jane Rowe's decision against Wade? He said, "Don't buy my stuff anymore." And I said, "You got it, Chief." Uh, uh, let's see. There's a little secret about Medicare and Social Security. They take money out of your Social Security check to pay a Medicare premium, and I don't mean the supplement you buy. I mean Medicare. Yeah, yeah. There's all kinds of, of financial chicanery going on there. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's not great, you know. But it's what are you gonna do? Were you thinking a large TV? Um, I'm not a fan of the lard library. Um, and I'm not a fan of their brand. I got to be very, very careful because I haven't thought about this a whole lot. Um, they're... Of, and, and I don't want to be insulting because this is absolutely a case of not to my tastes. I understand they are very popular. And I understand that that engaging with the lard fans would gain me a significantly larger following. But I have found that lard is very much like the G-dubs market, just on a smaller scale. And the few games of theirs that I have read were impenetrable on the scale of a tomorrow's war. Getting it to the table is a challenge that I'm not interested in. And a lot of the things that they do are, they're culturally very British, which is not a criticism, but they appeal to very British sensibilities in ways that they do not appeal to me. Right. So again, it's just a matter of taste. I'm not a lard fan because of the games and the personalities and the humor that they use. Uh, yeah. Palladium likes money. I like money. I'll take your money. You want, you want to give me your money? What do you want? I'll make it for you. That's palladium. One page bulge and rate on a ran pocket boxes are great. Uh, the current thin, notwithstanding. Yeah, I mean, I mean I, you, you can't take it away, right? Like, absolutely. Steve Jackson, he knows how to make money. Um, he, Steve Jackson is a genius at selling you the same thing over and over and over and over again. Walls the size of this this hotel room wall, absolutely filled with the same game, like like Monopoly. But you know, instead of Monopoly, it's New Yorkopoly and Las Vegasopoly, and and uh, it's what is the what is the game? The um, Munchkin, right? How many different Munchkin games can you buy before you've played Munchkin enough? It's business wise it's genius and he has made so much money that he can afford to tell guys like me I'm, i don't want your money which is great you know more power to him good 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 it it, it makes it easier for me to, to choose i'm not a huge fan either but i've not noticed peter pig solely using grids ak-47 is one of the models right ak-47 i've played that i played that uh back in the day and ak-47 does some really interesting things i would love to get that on the table but it has a couple of flaws that have kind of put me at bay. I have a copy that looks a lot like this of the original AK-47 that I'd love to get on the table. But again, I need to get the, I need to get the moderns available. And if I get my, my modern day red versus blue, then we can start looking at how AK-47 does things. Uh, Jeffro Johnson bought Car Wars 10 times, many such cases. Luke Farrell 
Uh, great watching a paint earlier before I switched over. Uh, yeah, Corvinus is great. He's got a really good channel. Uh, he does, and again, Corvinus, his channel is a lot like mine. He finds interesting little um, things that most people don't gain, and he makes them interesting. I, I never thought I would care at all about the Ottoman Empire. I don't. I didn't think I would ever appreciate that era of history. But you know, this jerk, he he makes me want to play it. Uh, Bork recently saw your man to man chainmail video. Wondering where did you get those great looking minis from? So those are I actually have them right over here. Let's this is a miniature table. Let's take a look. These are from a collection of manufacturers. These are 10 millimeter figures. This is my travel kit, and they come from the the sword guys. Uh, this isn't gonna work. There's no way this is gonna work. These are from Pendraken. Pendraken is your go-to source for all things 10 millimeter. If you're thinking about 10 millimeter, it should be your first stop. Pendraken is wonderful. Great little figures reasonably priced. If you're ever going to pick up War Master, go get all your figures from Pendraken. So that's most of them. Copplestone Casting has a limited range of 10 millimeter figures, and they have a pack of, they're not Lord of the Rings guys. They've got a ranger type, they've got a, an elven type, they've got a dwarf type, and they've got four little hobbits in 10 millimeters that are delightful. They've got a wizard, and I think I turned my, my they've got an old beardy wizard, and I think, yeah, this 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 fire wizard. Oh boy, are we gonna work this fire wizard in ten millimeter? Get a little bit more light on him, maybe. Yeah, that, that's good. He was originally, I believe, a an elven figure, and I just straightened out his bow and put a little bead on it, and then I carved up his his sword to make it look like a little torch, and he becomes a fire wizard. There we go. That's not too bad. So Pendraken, Copplestone Castings, that's where a lot of these orcs come from. Uh, and then Irregular Miniatures also has a limited range of 10 millimeter figures that are delightful. And they sell, and I think, I think Irregular sells them individually. So if you have some that you just need one or two, yeah, go for it. Uh, and it's part of my travel. It's part of my travel kit. So they're, right now they're they're all they're all on a plate. Num num num. Uh, I don't know. Right, let me turn this off so we can see so we can see them. Th they're going to slide out of the way, so I can't show you. But there they are. There's about 40 of them. Not quite enough. I you need to do. I really think that to do man to man chain mail justice, you you still want to use units of 10 to 15. Bloody Barons is interesting. Treats cavalry like an uh, almost like an airstrike. Great details on some War of the Rings, War of the Roses battles. Excuse me. Uh, they're all metal. I'm I like the metal. Uh, these 10 millimeter figures are all metal figures. Most of the figures that I use are 10 are metal. Uh, some people have pre have printed up, uh, including um, Attention Span Labs. And Mooseworks is another wonderful channel. He does a lot of 3D printing, and he sent me a big box. He actually sent me like a huge two millimeter army list. Uh, it's, it's, it's hysterical. It, it's a printing that's about this size. Those are my notes. It's a printing. It's about this size, and it's paper thin except where the troops are. And then you just use a, a blade. I, maybe uh, if I ever get done traveling on the road, uh, I'll be able to show you that. Uh, but look, for good 10 millimeter miniatures for a while now. You can uh, you can print miniatures in 10 millimeter. I wouldn't recommend scaling 28 millimeter figures. You lose a lot of details on those. Uh, any other questions for where we expect the channel to go in the future? Probably still a pretty good mix of miniatures and role-playing games. I'm probably overdue for a another how to win at RPGs video. Uh, but I'm I'm waiting. I've got a couple of irons in the fire. I've, I'm running a couple of experiments at the moment that I'm, I, I'm excited to show you and tell you about. But due to operational security, I can't just yet. And what are we up to? Uh, we're almost to an hour and a half. I'm going to go just a few more minutes. The Rifts question, yay or nay? I'm not sure what's the question. Will I ever play Palladium on screen? Probably not. It's, it's a big, convoluted, complicated game that I don't think lends itself to solo role-playing games uh, the way that we do here on the channel. Dart Mart, we broke 5,000 last night. This is the we already did it stream. We're celebrating having done it. Uh, John Willis, break out the three, the, the, the little black books. Man, I, 
when I have an opportunity to eat a Reuben sandwich, I take it because the ingredients, the Reuben sandwich is absolute magic. This is a wonderful question. It is the very definition of the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. I'm not a big fan of pastrami. I'm not a big fan of Thousand Island dressing. I'm not a big fan of sauerkraut. When you put all three of those onto rye bread and toast it slightly with a little bit of Swiss cheese. Oh, man. So I never buy them. I never eat them at home. I never make them myself because I'm just not good at it. But if I am that particularly, and here's the bizarre thing about the Reuben sandwich. As above, so below. Just like the, the like, these, these smaller independent groups, are uh, manufacturers are making the most interesting experiments. And this is where you find the best kind of games. You know, Sentient Robot, Google them. This is kind of like Infinity, Anthems of War. It's Infinity if it was a fantasy game. When it comes to a Reuben sandwich, you go to the dingiest diner you can find and their Reuben is going to knock your socks off. Like a, a Reuben at a junk diner is going to taste so much better than like a Five Guys burger. I, I don't know what it is. Yeah, Reuben all the way. Who asked that question? That's one of the best questions of the night. Steven, you win the no prize. I mean, I like a good ham sandwich. Who doesn't like a good ham sandwich? Uh, but, um, yeah, the, the Reuben for me. Uh, Magister Militum has some 10 millimeter, but they're currently looking for a new owner, and I think they're not casting until then. I, If I ever won the lottery, you, I wouldn't tell anyone, but there would be signs. And Mollison Magister Militatum would be one of those signs. Uh, pineapple on pizza, uh, uh, it, it's fine. I don't have a, I don't, I don't have a preference. Uh, it, it's Hawaiian style and you know, I'm a Hawaii bro. So I like pineapple. Uh, you, you better pair it with the right, with the right other toppings. If it's just pineapple and cheese, that's gross. That's disgusting. What are you doing? Get that out of my face. But if you go with a, with a nice salty ham and bacon, it can work. It, it needs that contrast, the salt with the sweet. Uh, I, I had to stop eating mayonnaise because uh, my waistline wouldn't handle it. it. You know, every decade you have to cut a little bit more out of your diet. I'm finding that pizza might have to go by the wayside if I want to maintain my size 30 belts. I just, man, the, all, the gluten is just killing me these days. Uh, celebrating, I found this channel because of the Nightwatch solo miniatures game, Kazar 7. Yeah, take a look at the, oh, he has... He has another title coming out that uses the same framework of rules. Uh, it's one of the new ones from uh, Osprey. Let me let me look it up real quick. Osprey Wargaming, Kodor Off. So the original game was called. Uh, it's called Exploit Zero now. Um, it's by Patrick Todoroff, and Exploit Zero was the first one. But it was originally called Hardwired, but somebody already had a Hardwired as an IP, so we changed it to Exploit Zero. And I couldn't get into it because I've never done Cyberpunk. I'm not good at Cyberpunk. I don't have the experience for it. I think it's, is it Doomed? No, it's not Doomed. There's another one. It's like, it's like Against the Darkness or, oh shoot, see, again, it's, I'm not going to be able to find it here because of amusing Bing. Uh, Osprey Wargame, Patrick... Todor off his books. It's when nightmares come, and it's a modern horror miniature war game. Uh, Insurgent Earth is that? Does that use the same uh, Night Watch system? It's a great system. I could definitely see reskinning it. Uh, as a Hawaiian, how popular is Elvis? There really these days, not very. He for you know for boomers, I'm sure he's wildly popular. But uh, their their numbers are decreasing, and uh, not so much. That was a branding thing. Uh, for something surprising and good, but doesn't sound it tuna and pineapple pizza. I could see that. Um, I could see tuna and pineapple. That would be a good mix. Uh, Twenty eight millimeter is usually Charles' go to, but he's jumped into the fifteen millimeter pool. Cowboys and Rogers, Rangers and Native Elves, Barbarians and Orcs. 
so many good stuff, man. You can't go wrong. There, there's no wrong answer here, right? Uh, yeah. Dice Tales. Good night. Thanks for stopping by. Wh what are we at here? What's our time at? We got 20 more seconds. Any other questions before we bail out? Before I tell you I'm praying for you? Because I am praying for you. I mean it. Particularly, I hope you all have a wonderful Easter. I hope that uh, the Easter Bunny is good to you. I hope you're good to your kids. I hope you make it to church on Sunday. I hope you honor and respect the sacrifice on Good Friday. Uh, Curacao is a phenomenal com company. They're, they have such a huge range. Their stuff is really well. It's well profiled. It's Again, I don't take a stance on whether realistic proportions are good or uh, artistic proportions, right? There's two different looks, and I use them both interchangeably. If you've got the oversized heads and hands so that you can see the details, I'm good with that. If you've got everything perfectly proportioned so it looks natural and normal, I'm good with that. And I've never, at the at the 15 millimeter scale, I've never found the contrast to make that big of a difference. Uh, likewise, with 15 millimeter and 18 millimeter, small 18s and big 15s work really well together. I I will mix and match them with wild abandon. Uh, yeah, have a good, have a holy, holy week. And uh, we'll see you on the next live stream. If not tomorrow, probably Wednesday, and then I'm going to take some time off for the holiday, and we'll come back the following week good and strong. We'll let the calendar catch up to our adventures, and until then, guys, I'm praying for you. There.